for me to go through those are Nina Schick, Director of Data and Polling at Rasmussen Global, and Jonathan Isaby, Editor of Brexit Central. Welcome to you both. Uh, Nina Schick, uh, Dominic Lawson's main point about Amber Rudd is once you start blaming your officials, they're going to turn around and leak against you, you're doomed. Absolutely. That's the argument that he makes. But in general, this just smacks of incompetence. I mean, the entire environment in Westminster, you know, accusations, counter accusations, cloak and dagger politics. He has a point, of course. But the bigger thing is that the entire government looks severely incompetent, not only because of the Windrush scandal, but because of Brexit. So the fact that Theresa May has lost, I think, her fourth cabinet minister in uh, less than half a year, uh, does not give the impression that the government is strong and stable and has the many tasks it's, it has at hand under control. I mean, we've got Juliet Samuel, who's a Remainer, Trevor Kavanagh, who's a Lever, both saying the government's making a mess of Brexit, Jonathan. Well, Trevor Kavanagh, I think, points out, or is it Juliet? Juliet points out that the government's only got one of its 11 Brexit bills through Parliament so far, uh, which is, of course, because there are a lot of people in Parliament who are seeking to frustrate what the government's agenda and what they're trying to do. And that's going to come you to know a head. To do? And that's going to come to a head this afternoon when you've got members of the House of Lords seeking to pass an amendment giving it the power to block Brexit, despite being a completely unelected House. So I think that no, there are there are parliamentarians who need to be aware of their role in all of this. Uh, but clearly, no, the government has got a, a lot of things on its agenda it's got to deal with. I think Brexit is clearly the most important. Uh, and frankly, that should be prioritised above everything else. I slightly disagree with that. I think the problems that the government is having right now is because it was asked to deliver an impossible proposition. When we voted to leave, we didn't decide whether that was to be a part of a customs oh, union. A come on. This, Jonathan, you can't honestly tell me that the electorate, Both when sides. they decided to leave, thought that they were leaving to leave the single market Absolutely, and the customs union. Absolutely, because both sides okay. said we want to take back control of our laws, our money, our trade policy. You cannot. You have ministers and MPs on this show who don't even know what the point is. Is that the government? Obviously, we have less than a year, very much less than a year, and the fact is that the government, if they cannot decide what the position is, unrefutably this is going to play out domestically and the person who will hurt the most is um, the UK or the partner in the negotiations who it's hurt, going to hurt the most is the UK. If you don't have a strong executive uh, leading the, the way then um, I just don't see how Brexit can be a success. But there's a counter argument to that isn't there that, that actually you could argue that a government like Theresa May who shifts from one side to the other, tries to accommodate everybody, mm -hmm. is actually, when everyone is divided as the country is on this, is probably the only way to proceed. I agree, but at, at a certain point you can't fudge it anymore. And the big question for me is the Northern Irish border. You can't fudge it anymore when you need to have legislation in place, you need to have international treaties in place. At some point the fudge has to end. Which is why this vote is going to be the sticking point. Well, and there's, there's a big uh, meeting of the Brexit subcommittee of the Cabinet coming up on Wednesday where they're going to make decisions about the kind of customs proposal that the UK wants to put forward. Uh, and in all of that, you have this proposal being put forward well, by Ollie Robbins, the, the Prime yeah. Minister's chief advisor, which is completely at odds with what a lot of the Brexiteers uh, would be well, happy with. Well, hang on a minute. Isn't that doing exactly what uh, Amber Rudd is being accused of? Isn't that blaming the official uh, rather than actually taking responsibility for the position? Because we know Theresa May is a very strong supporter of the position, well, uh, of the idea of a customs partnership uh, that Ollie Robbins is, has put forward. I would certainly blame the Prime Minister for listening too much to what Ollie Robbins is saying to her and listening to him rather than David Davis, who's the Brexit Secretary, who, if we believe what we read in the papers over the weekend, has said, you know, you've got to stop I mean, listening I mean, to him over me. With respect to David Davis, he's not a detailed man, is he? He is the one in charge of getting us out of the European Union, and he has well, clearly along said... With, along uh, with the senior civil servant. Yeah, but he's clear, also clearly said behind closed doors that the proposal that's been put by Ollie Robbins is totally unacceptable.